Hello and welcome to Behind the Lines. I'm Diane Dayton. Today we're going to talk about the fourth annual Lancaster Roots and Blues Festival. It's a festival of music. We're with the festival director, Rich Ruoff. Thanks for being here. Thank you for having me. This is so exciting. Boy, does the city come alive during this. It is a really fun event. Yeah. yeah. So this year it's going to be February 24th through 26th. It's three days like it was last year. And you had, what, like 83 hundred people last year is that right we did over the course of three days uh -huh. and this year because it's been growing at about 50 percent a year we expect about 12,000 people this year wow yeah that's amazing yes it is <laughs> absolutely amazing and I can only imagine what it takes to put together all of these artists that come in and and the behind the scenes things that are going on you've got a lot of people volunteering as well don't you yeah we'll use almost 300 volunteers over the course of three days and uh, of course then the the production people working the event and the stage managers. I mean, all in is probably 460, 470, or I'm sorry, 370 people working the event. Wow, that's amazing. So what we're looking at is there's going to be over 60 artists, which means over 80 concerts. Explain how that works. Well, yeah, we do, of course, we do bands from all over the world. Mm -hmm. uh, and so what you would call national artists. Uh, we do some regional artists, and we do some local artists. But for the out-of-town bands, we try and get them uh, to do two days because with 10 stages running at any one time, it's possible that you're going to have conflicts and people you want to see, you may not be able to see both of them. So you can kind of say, well, if I can't see this guy today, maybe I can see him tomorrow. Excellent. Yeah. So you were saying that you know there are 10 stages, eight different locations, and this is all within relative walking distance. About three blocks apart. And uh, every year we hire shuttle buses to drive people around because it mm -hmm. is winter. And every year the weather's so nice that people just walk. You know, <laughs> it's, it's an interesting thing. You're inside catching a yeah. concert and you're having, spending a lot of energy and really having fun. And you're like, I'll oh, get some fresh air. So you walk outside for five minutes, you're over to the next venue, bam, you're there. It's like one big party downtown for that whole weekend, isn't it? It really is. It's not just the music. It's, it's the energy of all the bodies in town and everybody passing each other and in a good mood. Mm -hmm. And I think that's what adds to the charm of the festival. Yeah. So when we look at the music that comes to Lancaster Roots and Blues, it's so diverse. Thank you. Uh, that's I love that. I like doing that. Yeah, I like yeah. to mix it up because you know everybody comes from music from different perspective and how they got turned onto it and what their favorite genres are. We do a pretty broad uh, cross section of, of genres. Yeah, and to be a little bit more specific, Americana, bluegrass, blues, country, folk, jazz, rock, rockabilly, singer songwriter, just to name a few. That's pretty good mix. Yes, that pre that's a great mix. And what you do is the way you do ticketing really allows people to experience things on their own pace and at their own level in the way they want to. Sure, well we understand not everybody's wealthy and, and, and they don't have the time. We're all busy in one way or the other. So, you know, some people just buy a one day ticket, some people buy a two day ticket and we could use it on any of the three days or some people just buy a full three day festival ticket, you know, they get a, they get a lanyard mm -hmm. and they can just come and go. And if you're local, it's great because even if you have a job, you have to go do the job, you can come back and still slip in and out of the festival. Yeah. Um, so for people who are busy, that, that's nice choices, but for people who are coming from out of town and they just want to make a whole weekend of it, they get the three-day festival pass and they really, they sink into their hotel and then they go to all the restaurants and they have a blast. That's right, I love it. You can go in and sample a bunch <coughs> of things. Let's talk about what we can sample and some of these artists that you have scheduled to come. Tony Emanuel. To Tony Emanuel? Tommy Emanuel. Tommy Emanuel, <laughs> yes. He's from Australia. Aha. Uh -huh. And, you know, I hate to say somebody's the best, but he, right now he's got the buzz as being like the best acoustic guitar player in the world. And he just does this thing where he's amazing. Like you can find him on YouTube, and some of his videos have 10 million views. And uh, tremendous, tremendous talent, and really fun to listen to and watch. So we're really proud to have him at the festival. That's great. You've got this New Orleans <coughs> thing going on, too. Yeah, this year we have, I think, at least three artists from New Orleans. Okay. Uh, we're doing, uh, well, of course, uh, Walter Wolfman Washington and the Roadmasters, who, if you don't know, I used to own Chameleon Club in Lancaster. And he was one of my first great New Orleans bands to come, like, in 1986. And he's been back many, many times. He has a lot of fans in the area. Uh, and he's a New Orleans stalwart in mm, the sense mm -hmm. that uh, after Hurricane Katrina, his band, they were the first artists to play in New Orleans right after the hurricane. Oh, wow. Like they didn't leave and then, you know, they got open like the day after the hurricane passed and, and, and they played. Uh, so it's wow. exciting. We're doing yeah. John Mooney. Okay. Uh, he, he's yes. also from New Orleans. A tremendous uh, acoustic guitar player. Uh, 
but like a he'll play a national steel guitar and really work the room again i've known him for 30 plus years uh but what a great what a great talent mm -hmm. and then what's the new one it's there? honey island swamp band yes uh that's the Typical New Orleans party band. Okay. It's a big band, lots of fun. Okay. Yeah. Moving to Mississippi. Is it Mr. Sip? Mr. Sip from Mississippi and also uh, Champ, Champ uh, I was doing that, uh, Grady Champion. I'm sorry, I booked this over the course of months. And, uh, yeah, I yeah, know. I'm but jumping around. Well, yeah, and you look at Grady, he's a Grammy winner too. R right, and, and Mr. Sip is of that caliber too. Uh, mm -hmm. Two great artists. And it's like really the next generation of great blues artists that are coming out of Mississippi. Okay, all right. Um, let me see, we had an Oregon singer. Uh, who do we got? Who do we got? We have Curtis Salgado. Oh, Salgado, oh. a great soul singer. And the interesting thing about him, when he was young, he was playing in a blues band in Oregon, mm -hmm. and that's where they filmed the movie Animal House. Okay. And one of the off nights, uh, John Belushi and Dan Aykroyd, I don't think Dan was there, but John Belushi was there, and he saw Curtis Salgado singing in a blues bar, <clears throat> excuse me, and he uh, he was so impressed that he came up with the idea of the Blues Brothers by watching this guy, and oh, he right? modeled his character off of this guy. And he's still touring, and he's still just a great, great talent. It really works the crowd. Yeah. Ray Fuller and the House Rockers. From Ohio. Yeah, blues from Ohio. Yeah, no, they're, yeah. We're, they're just a Midwestern, uh, popular Midwestern artist that we, we're pulling out of that region and putting him in here. And from New England, Room Full of Blues. <coughs> it's actually Ray Fuller and the Blues Rockers. That's probably a misspelling. Ah, okay, Blues okay. Rockers. Let's make that note. Yeah, <laughs> okay. but a good band, yes. <laughs> All right. So, Room Full of Blues from New England. Well, anybody who's like blues uh -huh. or big party bands, big right. horn bands, they know these guys. They've been around forever. Uh, they've toured the world many, many times. And it that's definitely a feather in our cap to get them down here. Well, looking at Americana as a genre, David Wax Museum. Yeah, it, there's. This is like the next generation of young young artists that tour tour the country, mm -hmm. and uh, they're one of the great Americana bands right now. Okay, the Hackensaw Boys. Yep, a uh, little now, little bit of an edge to them. Yeah, you're saying yeah. bluegrass with a punk attitude. Now, what yeah. does that entail? It's uh, the guitar's a little crunchier uh -huh. than you would expect from a typical bluegrass okay. band, but it works. It's not it's not just noise. It's uh, it's it's got some real musicality to it. And continuing with Americana, this time from India, <coughs> Reverend Peyton's Big Damn Band. Indiana. Did it say India? Indiana. <laughs> Indiana. Yes. <laughs> uh, Reverend Peyton's Big Damn Band. He's been around for a while. Yes. Uh, it's just a trio, but they sound so much fuller. Yes. And a uh, very popular band, and it'll be a lot of fun. So to get that full sound, there's this energy that they have, isn't oh, it? Oh, yeah. Th this is definitely one of those bands that you just walk in the room and you know there's a party going on. Yeah. yeah. The Peterson Brothers. Now, this is from Austin. They're young. They're Are they? 17 and 19. Uh, they're like the new thing. They're playing all the big rooms in Austin. Uh, all, all the major blues stars, when they come through town, have them share the bill with them. Mm -hmm. uh, two young black kids who just know how to play. And wow. Yeah, it's cool. Yeah. We're going to put the website up on the screen right now. You have probably one of the best websites I think I've ever seen to connect you with these artists, to find out more information, to get all the information you need about the festival. Tell us a little bit more about that. Well, I, you know, of course, the website will send you to the ticket link, mm -hmm. and you can look at all the options for buying tickets. Uh, but it will also break down. Uh, every artist will have their own web page, so you can get a photo and a bio, a description of what they're doing. Uh, usually, a link to a video or two that they have out there. So uh, it can really, if you have no clue about this artist, you can learn about the artist, mm -hmm. and you can link to their own website and even learn more. Uh, so you know, we'll have, like I said, sixty separate web pages just to show you who's coming. And then we talk, about, there's a map of the festival mm -hmm. and there's, for people coming from out of town, there, there's the hotel listings and things like that. So it's pretty comprehensive. You can go in there and literally <coughs> plan your whole weekend. Absolutely. Yeah. And it's amazing how many people really do. Yeah. You know, I'm, I'm more of a casual, uh, winging it kind of guy. So if I come <laughs> to something like this, I just wander. But some people really like to plan right, ahead right, and, and right, figure out what they're doing. Right, right. Yeah. Well, that's what I think is great about what you have there because you can go in and start to sample some of these types of music. And I like the fact, as we said a little bit earlier, that you can go in and sample a few minutes here, move there, and check it out that way. That way you're not overly committed necessarily and right. can sample more than what you may be able to do at a typical festival. Right. So kudos to you for that model. Thank you very much. <laughs> that's excellent. We're going to take a brief pause and we come back, we're going to talk about more artists and more 
Lancaster Roots and Blues. Stay with us. Welcome back to Behind the Lines. We're talking about the fourth annual Lancaster Roots and Blues, a festival of music, along with the festival director, Rich Ruoff. Rich, this is so exciting. Going to expect, what, about 12,000 people yes, we this are. year? Yeah. yeah. And it is February 24th, 25th, and 26th. It's a Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. All downtown, all these different venues that we can go to, all these different stages, 10 stages, eight locations, over 60 artists, and over 80 concerts. Wow. Continuing the list of artists, let's talk about BC 500. BC 500 is a local artist named Quentin Jones, okay. who's a guitar player, who was just inducted into the Rockabilly Hall of Fame. Wow. Uh, partly for his guitar playing, but also because he's a good producer and he's produced, he's been working with a lot of the great Rockabillys, player, a lot of the Rockabilly greats. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, Johnny Neal is just joined his band, will be on keyboards. Johnny is from Delaware originally, but now he's a big Nashville star. And of course he toured with the Allman Brothers for many years. So the quality of his players in this band is really high. Wow, oh, that's great. Well, there are some other great local artists that you have scheduled here. Jake Lewis, and you said, what, he's got a new record coming out? Yeah, he's got a new record coming out, which I believe they recorded at the Sugar Tank Studios, ah. which is a new studio in Lancaster. Yes. Well, you're familiar with yes, that. Yes, I am. <laughs> <laughs> I am. Okay. Uh, how about Tuck Ryan? Tuck Ryan, again, another new artist, uh, but I've heard his stuff and I, I really like it. And, and I, you know, it's a little bit of a singer-songwriter thing, but it's got a it's got a, an Americana feel to it. Ragtime Willie, that kind of says it all. Yeah, that's uh, <laughs> they've been around a long time. They're just a classic local blues band. They're doing it right. You know? A couple other ones I saw in here that we're familiar with too that are great fun party bands. Mama tried. Right, Mama tried is fun. Yeah. And uh, pocket full of soul. Pocket full of soul. <laughs> I, I like every year. I like to bring in. Uh, you know, obviously we bring in these big national mm -hmm. acts, the Grammy winners and such. Yeah. But it's fun to also. Uh, Rolling guys that have been playing the music scene for years, and it, it gives them a chance to play with a with a full audience and a, yeah. yeah, some fresh yeah. fresh faces get to see them. Yeah, someone I always look forward to seeing is Clarence Spadey. I love Clarence. We go back thirty plus years. Right. Uh, he, I think he's the best blues artist in Pennsylvania, and we're going to have him back. Yes. Yeah. When you see him on guitar and you hear him, I mean, he is just so moving he's in got, many many ways. Yeah, he's got great soul. Yeah, yeah. very yeah. much so. Swamp Candy. Swamp Candy, how's it described there? Here it says primitive blues influenced Americana duo. Yeah, you know, and that might sound kind of uh, wonky or, you uh -huh. know, academic. It's not. It's a party. They know how to play. It's really fun. They're out of Annapolis. Okay, yeah. okay. Uh, Billy Price Band. Billy Price, again, another legendary Pennsylvania artist. He's played with everybody, uh, but he's out of Pittsburgh. So if you have ever went to school in Pittsburgh or have lived there, uh, just called White Soul Singer. Mm, uh, mm -hmm. But I mean, he's performed at Carnegie Hall. I mean, he's just wonderful. I used to book him at Chameleon Club, and we're excited to have him back. He'll bring his horn section and really, really bring it home. Wow. Savoy Brown. Savoy Brown. We did them in the first year at the festival, and they went over Gangbusters. Of course, mm -hmm. they're a legendary British blues band coming from that same era as uh, bands like Led Zeppelin. Mm -hmm. So, uh, you know, what a classic. It's a classic rock blues band. Okay. Yeah. And this is another familiar name, too, Papa Chubby. Papa Chubby has a new record coming out, uh, and he is a large man, as his nickname suggests. <laughs> uh, yes. And he, he likes the nickname, so we just go with it. Uh, but uh, he, can, he can really play. Wow. From Memphis, we have, what, John Nemeth? Oh, yeah, John Nemeth. He's, he's tours, tours the world. Um, I would say the Memphis sound is a good good description of what he's doing in the, in the kind of a blues genre thing. Mm -hmm. yeah. Speaking of, you know, all these different locations that we're talking about, let's let, let everybody know some of the areas that they can experience sure. these fabulous artists that you're bringing here. The Marriott, first of all. Well, actually this year, because we moved the main stage to the big tent in Lancaster Square, uh -huh. we're using the Marriott for our main ticketing and merchandise yep. area, yep. but we're not using it for music. Okay. I, we're going to roll that back in for 2018, but it was our choice to try some new things because we expect this festival to keep growing mm -hmm. and I wanted to try some other options before we had to do it uh, and uh, I think the tent's going to be a huge asset because uh, next year we expect 15 to 17,000 people and the year after that we expect to be at about 20,000 Wow! which is what we think is the most this town can handle okay. in a comfortable way so that's where we're headed 
So the new, the venues for this year, and I'll just go through them. Yes. Uh, of course, the Ware Center mm -hmm. with the world class Steinman Hall. Oh, absolutely. Proscenium seating. Absolutely. Oh, what a great place to yep. see music and hear music mm -hmm. acoustically. It's perfect. Uh, uh, my old club, the Chameleon Club. Yes. Uh, Telus 360, which mm -hmm. is you know another great club in town. There's two stages there. Oh, back at Chameleon, we're going to do the Lizard Lounge again. Yes, that's always a great experience. Yeah. I like the intimacy of so the lounge. So you can go up and down, and yeah. you know. So we'll alternate bands. There's always a band on stage then at that okay. point. Okay. Uh, we brought the Elks Lodge back this year, mm -hmm. uh, which is a classic old Pennsylvania social club with sure a great is. stage. Sure yep. uh, The Village Nightclub will yes. be with us for Saturday night. Uh huh. Uh, the Federal Tap House, which is a big beer hall, but we put a stage right. in there and it works right. out well. Right. Um, I have to think about this. Uh, oh, there's a new venue on East King Street called the Excelsior. Yes. And it, they did a beautiful job of renovating it. It, it was an old brewery pre-prohibition. Mm -hmm. And it's been empty for many, many years. And someone came in and they renovated it and they did a beautiful job. Uh, it's basically a special events hall uh, for, for parties and mm -hmm. weddings and things. But we're excited to be there. We're going to host a VIP party in there. We'll also be open for the general public for a couple concerts. Right. Right. Yeah. So. Wow. This, logistically, this takes a lot to get together. And I know, like you were saying earlier in the other segment, there's, what, over 400 people that are behind the scenes working on this. Right. And, and of course, you know, in, in you know, fortunately, it's it's me in a small office uh, making a lot of this happen now, but mm -hmm. then we just start rolling okay, in. Yeah. And, you know, there's just people taking care of volunteers. There's people taking care of publicity and promotion and the website. And it, so it's, it's just, it's a lot. Yeah. Yeah. I, to ask you if you have any favorites is probably a crazy question, but what do you really look for, Rich? Because I know I see you walking around right. and checking out different things, right. and sometimes with the hat, and you know. <laughs> yeah, uh, and that's, it's always like asking which child is your favorite. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so I can't really do it, but, I, and I like being surprised. Like, so I'm, you know, I know a lot of these artists, but I right. don't know all of them. Right. Like, I'll be like, I hear something I think I like. Mm -hmm or I'll see a video and say, that really works for me. Right. But can they do a whole show? And then you, when you get there and you see it, the, the I would say the rule for booking for me, besides, you know, obviously right. we work with some local bands, but I'm talking the national acts. These are working touring artists. Mm -hmm. And when you're doing 100 or 200 shows a year, you're really good. Like, it, 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 you get dialed in that you don't get to for most. Like, we have a lot of good local professional musicians. Mm -hmm. But if you're in the same band and you do 200 shows a year and, and year in and year out, you're going to get really, really good. Yeah. I mean, if you go back to the early Rolling Stones, mm -hmm. they did a thousand concerts in three years. Wow. Uh, that's like wow. every night. Yeah. Or two a day sometimes. Right. I mean, and so they had a pretty good start. The Beatles played six nights a week, you know, at the Cavern in mm -hmm. Germany. And two shows a night, or for four hours at a time, uh, you know it, that's the school, and it, mm -hmm. that's why by the time the general public hears them, they're amazing. That's what these bands are; they're working pros. Yeah, and going about doing this, I know sometimes it, it has to be hard to decide exactly who all you want, but it's exciting, as you were saying. Right. Well, let, let's just bring him here, and that's what you used to do with the <coughs> Chameleon too. You gave a lot of artists a start and a venue to perform. Right, and and thank you, and. I'm still doing that a bit here mm -hmm. too. Like, uh, I mean, obviously, you know, you have your uh, Taylor Swifts and your Beyonces, and they're superstars and Adele's, <laughs> and wonderful. Um, this is a different thing. These are these are pro musicians that aren't writing pop material. They're just playing great music that's played with, from the heart and with soul. And so, even if you're not familiar with them, just wandering in, mm -hmm. it, they're going to take you on a trip, and you're going to feel the vibe. And it it's. Everybody feels it. Yeah, yeah, they really, really do. Once again, let's put the website up on the screen, and we're going to find on there everything we need to know. Right? Yeah, we. <laughs> I try to so. answer as many questions yeah. as I can because I hate answering emails. So we <laughs> just, just go to the website. You should be able to find all the details. And if you still can't find it, feel free to email right. us. Right, and if you're just catching us partway through the show, what you're going to find on the website, one of the things I think is fantastic, is that you can go in and sample some music for each of these artists so you can get an idea of yes. where you want to go right. and sample it too. And with you, the ticketing is great. It's that three day, two day, one day. Exactly. And and uh, you know you can you can do what you want. And if if we don't sell out in advance, uh, there'll be tickets available at the Marriott okay. throughout that weekend. But uh, 
you know, I would encourage you to get it ahead of time. Yeah, it so. makes a lot of sense to start planning too. And once again, we're expecting, well, close to 12,000 people yeah, yeah. to come downtown. So get your reservations in early too, well, if you're yeah, gonna ticket stay sales, somewhere, right? Yeah, I mean, we've had early bird ticket sales going mm -hmm. on while we recorded this mm -hmm. before you broadcast right. it. Uh, but the ticket sales are double ahead of last year at this time. So, wow, that's yeah. exciting. That's got to make you feel good. So the word is out. The word is out. This is the place to be. <laughs> Lancaster for the Lancaster Roots and Blues of Festival of Music. And once again, it is February 24, 25, 26, and it is a Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. We'll be back with some final thoughts, so stay with us. We've been talking about Lancaster Roots and Blues, the Festival of Music. There's going to be a 1940s big band sort of sound. Was it King Street Big Band, right? Yeah, you know, it's interesting. Lancaster is blessed to have so many good musicians uh, in a town this size. Not every town this size has the depth of talent that we do. And there's a lot of good horn players. Mm. And horn players are always for hire, and they'll travel and they'll do any gig they get paid for but they do something for love, and this is a project they do for love. So it's probably like about 15 people in this band, oh, wow. uh, men and women, and they, they meet, uh, they, pri they play regularly at Telus 360 on King Street, so they call themselves the King Street Big Band. Okay. Uh, we're gonna put them in at the Ware Center, and we're really excited about that. Oh, wow, yeah. then that's gonna be spectacular in right. there too. Yeah, if you, if you love the classic sound of that music that came out of the 40s, these guys nail it. Yeah, so I think really when you're talking about the depth of music here, we said a little bit earlier at the top of the show, there's Americana, bluegrass, blues, country, folk, jazz, rock, rockabilly, singer, songwriter. Wow, it truly is expansive. I'm so pleased and so excited that you have decided after leaving the chameleon <laughs> that you know, you're not gonna stop doing what you do with music for our city and beyond. Thank you so much for all of that, Rich. Well, thank you. I mean, I booked this as a music fan. Yeah. Like, it's not just about, oh, how can I get customers in? Like, no. this is me like getting it. who I like. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, that's right. Who do I want to hear? Who do I want to book, right? Right. right. <laughs> so if you want to really hear who Rich wants to hear, <laughs> come to the festival. And once again, it is the 24th, 25th, and 26th of February. Thanks so much for all you do and for bringing this to our town. Wonderful. Thank yeah. you. Yeah, it's thank really, you. really, really wonderful. We'd like to say thank you for joining us today, too. I'm Diane Dayton, and remember, keep looking behind the lines. You might be surprised what you find.